Um, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Chris Davis. I am the Assistant Director of Admission and Financial Aid here at Capital. Um, we would like this panel to be interactive. We encourage you to ask questions. Um, it's your source of information. Um, I'm going to turn over to the panelists and let them introduce themselves. My name's uh, Araceli Tagliaventi. I'm a 3L. My name is Ryan Schick. I'm a 3L as well. Okay. Ryan, why don't you start off and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you wound up in law school. I'm 32 years old currently. My wife and I were living in New York. We met at Indiana University. I was an editor at Sports Illustrated, a photo editor, and um, moved there to Condé Nast. And summer of 2008, the economic financial crisis happened, and I found myself um, really getting into the business aspect of what was going on inside of our economy. And a new job opportunity came up for me that began to pique some interest that um, an uncle of mine who was a judge planted back in 2002. I began looking at law schools, my wife being from Ohio she and in retail, she said, you can go to law school anywhere you want as long as it's in Columbus. And so I had uh, two very good choices, and it was uh, Capital or Ohio State. Um, opposite to Ryan. <laughs> um, I went to an all-women's independent college in New Jersey. Um, and I decided, I knew early on that I was going to go to law school. Um, so I decided to stay in New Jersey and go to school because it was the most affordable thing. And um, in looking at different law schools to go to, Capital just kept coming up on my LSAC preferred list, you know, like you put in criteria for what you expect in a law school. And I kept thinking, well, I've never been to Columbus, Ohio, but if they keep coming up on my list, they must be really good. Um, I came and I visited, and I absolutely loved everyone here. The staff and uh, professors were very, very friendly, and they gave me what I was looking for, which was one-on-one -on -one contact with professors. Law school's, you know, different than being an undergrad. It's different than grad school. You need to know that your professors ha really have an open-door policy, and that's what I felt like when I came to visit. So I decided to come to Capitol. Thank you both, and see, there's many paths that lead to the same place. Um, now, as I said, I want to keep this interactive. I want to encourage everyone here to ask questions. Don't make me call on people. Just kidding. Just kidding. But you are in law school, so, you know, get used to it. So I want to open the floor up to questions for our panelists. Um, just raise your hand and fire away. Okay, in the back there. In just case you couldn't hear, the question was, how many hours outside of class do you spend getting ready for class? Um, I think it really depends. I think your first year that um, I, I, my first year study habit, just, I don't, I don't calculate hours. I would arrive at law school at about 8 a.m. and I wouldn't leave until 8 p.m., uh, Monday through Friday, and I would work Saturday from about noon until 6 and then Sundays I would take the day off because I was like, it's God's day, it's my day, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. But you de I definitely t needed to make sure that I planned to have Sunday off way in advance. So I was doing work for next week, you know, on Saturday and Friday. Um, so I, the way I thought about it, and one of my mentors told me, think of law school as a full-time job. If you're going to go full-time, treat law school as your job. If you're going to get to work at 8 a.m., get to law school, you know, at 8 a.m., put in the work early and make sure you get all of your reading done. But also you're going to have writing assignments where you need to devote more time. So things happen where you need to study more. So it really depends on you. I'm actually going to piggyback off her answer, and I think she's absolutely correct. Um, the equation for me really came down to, um, and she was correct in saying, I, working professionally, um, it was very natural for me to begin handling this just like a job. Um, I arrived early. I had a very good parking spot. I like that. Um, but I would work about two to three hours outside of the class for every hour I was inside of the classroom. Good question. Okay. Next. Any other questions? Right there in the back, please. Are you both full-time? Yes, sir. We're both uh, daytime students, three L's. And it was actually three years ago this weekend that I met Dean Mahaley in New York. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I won't mention how I remembered that, but uh, <laughs> it's the day we got our cat. Um, <laughs> but um, the, um, one of the reasons and what I was looking for in capital um, 
my father-in-law was a professor and a dean at uh, Ohio State, and so there was a lot of, there was not pressure, but there was encouragement to look at Ohio State across um, across the uh, um, town, excuse me. But the, um, I contacted both schools' offices, uh, offices of professional development, and if you're very serious about attending law school and you have an idea of what you want to do, any school you look at, um, especially the school's office of professional development, come up with a series of three to five questions. Call them, describe what you want to do. And I called, um, at the time, Assistant Director uh, Sean Beam and picked up the phone and began describing what I wanted to do and what I wanted to get out of law school. And he said, well, we have a graduate. He graduated here in 2003. He's currently working at the White House. Let me see if he'll spend some time talking to you. Fifteen minutes later, he called back and the next morning, which was a Saturday, I was surprised. He was working at the time for the vice president. He called and he gave me 45 minutes of his time. Um, it was that level of enthusiasm that I saw firsthand out of a student that really geared my attention here. He said several things that I have seen empirically during my time here, and that is many of the professors here become very good friends. Um, I happen to live in Bexley. A lot of the professors are neighbors of mine. Um, see them out when my wife and, I, wife and I are out walking. Um, we'll get together, we'll go out to lunch together um, as classmates, and the open door policy truly is that. Um, almost every single professor here is extremely accessible, and that was very important to me because I recognize the difference between a graduate program and what this is, and this is a professional program, so I would really highly emphasize contact in the Office of Professional Development at this school. It's a very well said answer. <laughs> Any other questions? In the back. <clears throat> Um, I, I don't have children, however, um, I'm recently married, um, and I have, honestly, any <laughs> people will tell you, well, I have maybe eight different jobs in, in law school and outside, um, and so even though I don't have children, I can understand the multitasking aspect of what your, what the overall crux of your question is, um. I think that you learn to manage your time. Definitely in law school, you learn how to organize. If you never learned how to organize a schedule or a weekly schedule, a monthly schedule, you're going to learn how to do it in law school. Um, I arrive here at 8 a.m. I still, even though I don't have classes early anymore, um, sometimes I'm here. I, I also work at City Hall. Um, I know what time I need to be out of work in order to read. Um, I know that I can read a lot faster now than I did my first year, so I don't need to have three hours of reading because um, I can read in a half an hour what took me three hours before. Um, <laughs> additionally, I think that um, you make time if there's something that you're very passionate about. Sometimes I'm up until 3 a.m., sometimes I'm up until 2, Some sometimes I get to go to bed at 8 or sometimes I take a night off and I'm like, I'm going to bed at five. It, you know, you make it work and you learn how to, you learn how to prioritize. So I know that there are certain things like I need to get done right now. Um, and there are certain things I can push to the back burner. So for me, um, being from New Jersey, I, I devoted a lot of my time originally to my family, but as I explained to them, law school is my time to be selfish. So I kind of put a lot of family obligations on hold, um, and I explained to them, like, you need to figure it out. These are three years where I really need to focus on myself. Um, obviously, that's a little bit different when you have children because you need to devote time to them. So I know Ryan recently had a child, so I'll let him chime in. Six weeks Friday. Thank you. Um, the, um, and oddly enough, the first civilian non-family member to meet him is my current criminal procedure professor. He was there. His daughter was having a baby at 11.58 on a Friday evening. <laughs> so once again, it becomes family, whether you like it or not. But um, the work-life balance is something that uh, you will have to discover on your own. 
the best bit of advice, it takes a while to sink in, but never compare yourself to anybody else. I'm not comparing myself to her late study hours right now. Um, what's important for me is being grounded and spending time with my wife. And so I will often cut off studies at six, seven o'clock in the evening. And if I do not, I just pick it back up the, the next morning. I wake up a little earlier, but I never show up to class unprepared. I mean, that's a death sentence and the professors can smell it like sharks in water. Um, that being said, the um, Capital offers some excellent panels very early on in your first year. One of them is the friends and family panel. Um, and that's two parts. One is an actual um, class, uh, I believe Professor Gillis mm -hmm. delivered it for us. And if you come to Capital, you will quickly learn to love Professor Gillis. She will bring out the best in you. Um, but she um, Socrated my father-in-law. She didn't realize that he was a dean of philosophy. She asked him a question on causation, but in, he answered correctly. But it was really interesting for my wife because she saw what I was going through three, four times a day and why even though I had four hours of classes, I was coming home and I was tired because it is very exhausting. But you do figure it out. You're reading, your proficiency becomes better. You learn the holdings of cases better. You identify the rules. You identify the issues. And that makes life a little bit easier. But you have to get through that first year, and that's the hardest part. Maybe not as hard as your LSAT essay, but still pretty hard. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah I think the main thing is set a structure for yourself that you're comfortable with. And once you, you feel comfortable in that structure, you, you'll be able to do so much more because you'll understand what you're capable of and what your, what your own personal limits are. So it's really about being self-aware of what, what your capabilities are. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to ask a question myself, if you guys don't mind. Now, you talked about a lot of time management and structure. What are some of the things you're involved in outside of the class, you know, in your personal lives, organizations, you know, around the city of Columbus? Well, um, academically, internships. Uh, my first year, I interned for uh, Columbus City Attorney Rick Pfeiffer and was given an awesome project. And... They made a television special out of it, um, City Attorney Pfeiffer did. That was a lot of fun. Um, personally, um, in addition to uh, maintaining a very happy marriage and building a family and building a home, um, I'm very involved uh, with one of the local political parties and working on a statewide level with them. They are very involved with the Capitol students. Um, and you might remind me of something else, but I'll... I'll pass this off to you. Um, I, um, I do work study here at the law school. Um, I'm on journal, um, moot court, BALSA, which is the Black Law Students Association, I'm the president of that. I'm coordinating the peer advisor program here. That's what I do here. <laughs> um, I also work for uh, city attorney Rick Pfeiffer um, at City Hall and that's all I can remember right now. And breathe and relax when you have the time, right? <laughs> yes. Um, the next question? Sure. What's the academic year like? Is, I assume it's, what, semesters? Um, tell me about, um, do you go to class during summer, trying to speed things along? Not that you want to get out of law school. I'm sure you both love it, but tell me about the academic um, the academic year, I think, honestly, the first year is the hardest year. Um, well, it was for me anyway. Um, I will say it's definitely a different way of learning. Um, and I don't think that anyone can ever tell you enough for you to prepare for it. Um, it's kind of like once you get into it, it's like, wow, this is really different. Um, but it's definitely also a lot of fun. As Ryan spoke, spoke about, you do get the opportunity to meet with a lot of professors, and a lot of professors will become your friends outside of the classroom and, you know, a person that you dread to meet in the classroom sometimes. But they're always there, and they're always able to help you when you need help or if you need advice. I chose not to take summer classes my first um, summer out of law school because I worked. Um, I worked at a mid-sized law firm downtown and it was fortunate enough to ha have it be a paid position so I needed the money so I went with that. Our stories are in fact very similar. Um, 
as I said it before, I worked for City Attorney Pfeiffer for summer, so I did not take um, any summer classes that summer. When I found out that, um, as planned, we were, you know, having a baby, decided to load up this semester to take advantage of my wife's maternity. Now, need not get any further detail, but decided to take one intensive course this semester, a negotiations course. We went to class from eight to one, if I remember, um, but did an entire semester in one week. That was fantastic. And then also did my advanced legal drafting course um, over the summer as well. So I did two classes. And this semester, I'm taking 16 hours. But first semester, and for the students in this room, prospective students, your first week, you will likely hear this. Tell your parents you will talk to them after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And if not after Thanksgiving, after finals. Um, they will have to make sacrifices. And I'm saying that to all the parents in the room. They love you. They're thinking about you. But it requires a sacrifice to succeed. Um, one of the best feelings is one of the oddest feelings. First semester, waking up the next morning after finals and not having anything to do was really weird. It felt like a, you know, a vet or somebody who would come back from war missing a limb. Like you just, there was an itch, but you just didn't know where to scratch it. But it's very busy. It's very time consuming. So you don't get the feedback that you're used to at undergraduate. But once you do and you get those grades the next semester and you look back and you realize what you've done, it's an awesome feeling. Also, I, I just want to chime in and just add that you, you can work and uh, take summer classes. I did that this summer. I just I didn't do it my first summer because I was working at a firm and, you know, they have a lot of events in the evenings and you need to be at all the events. Um, so I did. I chose not to do it because I was at everything that they hosted. Um, I did take two summer classes this summer in the evenings. So it's, it's doable. It's so. Okay. Next question. Well, while our audience crafts this next question, I will ask one of my own. I'm sure you guys, when you, before you started law school, you had some assumptions or things that you were expecting. What were some of the things that were different than you expected once you got to Capitol? If there were any, maybe all your expectations were met. Has anybody in this room seen the paper chase? Okay. At the very beginning of the movie, um, the professor, it's what's called Socratic, a Socratic method, where the professor will just blindly call on a student, give me the facts of the case, give me the issue, give me the holding. That, by and large, to some professors, and I'm using that in the LSAT manner, to some, it could mean all, but to some professors, um, they will adopt that method. What was also very interesting is how other professors took a more hands-off approach and they allowed the students to lead the discussion. And I actually found some of those to be many of the most enlightening conversations that we had in class. Um, is there anything that you could add to that? Um, I think something, I thought that everyone in law school was really smart and- Smarter I, than yourself? <laughs> of course, yeah. I'm the smartest obviously. Um, but I thought that you know everyone here is going to be really smart. Everyone's going to be on their A game. It's going to be really competitive. It's going to be dog eat dog. I won't be able to get a word in, and I'll feel you know so small. And I really did not experience that at all when I came here. I found that the professors were very engaging, very welcoming, very concerned about how you were doing, how are you coping, um, and you also meet a lot of friends and you you meet people who want to work with you um, a lot of people started study groups the first day um, started helping each other outline helping each other make rule statements and I was just so amazed by like the the, the friendliness of everything so it's really not that competitive as appear compared to certain other law schools and lastly the the writing style um, in journalism it was always inverted pyramid in law school, they call it IRAC, Issue, Rule, Analysis, Conclusion. Um, I will readily admit that's where I struggled with, I mean, after 10 plus years in journalism. But the legal writing staff here is outstanding. Um, I just was not, my very first paper I did for ASP, and that's another program that I attended um, early on where you go to school three, work, three weeks early. And it's kind of like a law school boot camp. But my very first paper by Professor Coble, I received an NA and everybody else was getting one through tens. And I was like, NA, what does that mean? And he said, you gave me the issue, you gave me the rule, you concluded, but you gave me no analysis. And it took me a while, it took that to sink in because you realize that um, in Professor Distelhorse's words, 
if you'll get to know him, you'll love him. Um, you have to hit somebody over the head with the law. And I think that that's something that we're not used to coming out of graduate school or coming out of undergraduate or any other program for that matter. You're here in a law school. There has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. And stand on your own feet and decide that for yourself in your finals because that's something that took me a little while. It affected me, but once I got the hang of it, it was a lot of fun and it was really empowering. Any other questions from the audience? In the back again. Um, I'll be honest, uh, my first year, I think every Wednesday, every Wednesday, I would get in my car and uh, my fiance and I were, we were long distance at the time and I would call him and he lived in England. We were like five hours difference, but I would call him at like midnight, midnight hour time. And I'm like, I just can't do this. And I'm, I, I would break down. And I complained to my mom. I'm like, I don't think I'm cut. I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is right for me. Maybe, maybe, you know, I had too many like big dreams and I, I would just go on rants. I'm like, I'm all messed up mom. And um, I eventually I was like, you know what? I'm just psyching my own self out. I'm in my own head too much. And you get caught up in like, you get lost in all of it. Cause you read a hundred pages, you know, every week. And by the time, like you really stop to think like, whoa, I just read a hundred pages. Like I've never done that throughout all of undergrad. Like, <laughs> and then it just becomes like a surreal moment. And then it hits you like, Am I really doing this? Am I cut out to do this? Am I, are people always going to think that I know the right answer, but I really don't? Like, and what you have to just be and do is just pick yourself up and say, you know what? Today's just a rough day. Tomorrow's going to be a lot better. And generally, it, it, it is always really better for me the next day. But you, I, for me, my first year, it was every Wednesday. This semester, you know, it's every Monday whenever I have tax. So. <laughs> There are always going to be hard days, but you pick yourself up and, you know, if it's something, if this is something that you definitely want to do, you'll find that motivation within you to keep going. So, I really like your question. Um, and if I may speak to all of you, just there really was a day I was ready to walk away. And um, I called my wife. I walked out to the Broad Street front and I just said, you know, it was halfway through my second semester, and um, I did well first semester. I had one class I didn't do so well in, and um, I said, I'm going to pick myself up. I'm going to do this, and I felt like I was starting to get some traction, and our motion for summary judgment comes out, and as a 1L, that's your big paper. Um, well, I submitted it to TWIN, which is an online Westlaw um, utility that a lot of professors use and I submitted it at 905 for a 930 or 915 for a 930 um, deadline and 920 no no email no automatic you know receipt 925 no automatic receipt 926 hitting reload 928 hitting reload taking screenshots emailing the professor hitting reload 932 um, paper rolls in and I've lost 25 points on 100 point paper so the best that I could get was a 75% and you spend weeks working on this paper. And I came up with a legal argument I was very excited about um, and went up against one of our students I know who was, is you know, in the top probably five students in our school. So I really wanted to show him that I could win. And I already lost even before the paper was submitted. And I went to a professor who was here at the time, Professor Bodine, and went into his office, and man, I think Kleenex, Kleenex stock went up that day. Um, he said, go home, nap. Go home and nap. And listening to him, but not really listening to him, I went down to Professor Bloker, and I said, Professor Bodine says to nap, but I'm ready to quit. Thank you very much. This has been a great opportunity. And she looked at me in the face, and she just said, I was wondering when you were going to come to me like this. It took me back. I was just like, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, you know, almost every student in your class has come to me at some point, male and female, and broken down. And so 
I was there and she said, do you feel like you're pressing your head up against a brick wall and it's not moving? And I said, yes, but I'm still done. And she said, who have you spoken to? And I said, Professor Bodine told me to go home and nap. Go do it. Went home and I napped five, six hours that afternoon. And I woke up about six o'clock and I was ready to go back the next morning. And not only did I finish that semester out, um, I should add, I also I did not do so well on a civil procedure because you're doing so many different courses and you're learning to think so differently. And again, I was so removed from school and I was getting my tail whooped by a lot of students who were coming out where studying was very natural for them. And I had a wife that I wanted to go home and spend some time, to, time with and that was very important. Um, and so maybe that impacted me. Um, but on my final exams, I got four A's that, at the end of that semester. Something clicked, something changed. Um, the one class I really truly wanted to ace in this school was con law. And I got one of the highest scores Professor Beatty has ever given on a final. Um, I had the highest turnaround in civil procedure. I went from an F on my midterm to a C plus, which means I basically aced the essay. Something clicked because I didn't give up, but the school didn't let me give up either. So it's not easy to say, but that's the truth. That's what happened. Um, and I think that any other school probably would have just pushed me out, but the school didn't. And so there. And this is being recorded, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are running short on time, but I want to ask one final question to each of our panelists. If you could give each of these people in this room one piece of advice as someone who has been where they're sitting right now and is now sitting where you're sitting, what would it be? I would say that uh, if this is your dream, go for it. Don't let financial aid, lack of funding, or people tell you that you can't do it or if you think that you're not smart enough to do it. Lawyers aren't born smart. They become smart through law school. And if this is your dream, go for it 100%. Go crazy. <laughs> well, you just made my response very difficult. Um, in your LSAT preparation, in your essay, even if you're waitlisted, um, with your teachers, with the course you don't get, never give up. I mean, just truly don't do it. Um, but ask yourself, most importantly, what you want out of a law school. And if you feel that you're strong enough academically to carry yourself, um, open it all up. But if you truly also want something special out of your law school, um, ask yourself that and start contacting professors here and really get to know the school because there's something very special that's going on here. And I'd like to close with the statement that um, the student who was working at the White House said that day. Uh, I may, be, may repeat myself here, but he did say that he would take the top 10% of this school up against the top 10% of any other school. And having worked in this community and having sat in on lobbying meetings, that's where my interest is on the Hill and seeing other people like myself, not just from Ohio State or other schools around Ohio, but um, there was a student this summer from Northwestern, et cetera. Um, I felt in many ways more prepared because this school is very practical. And I think a lot of the students confuse theoretical law for practical law. And I think it makes a world of difference. Thank you. I want to give a round of applause for our uh, uh, panelists here. <clears throat> they both did a very, very good job, and we thank them very much.